Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to make a custom debug script or debug file that will essentially allow you to debug either UI or in-application information and figure out why things aren't working for some users. So essentially what this is going to do is allow you to store data, whether it's in your UI or some information from within a project, and it's going to store it in a custom file format of whatever your choice is. And the formatting you use can be, you know, just a standard text format with a tab or line delimited uh, format, or you can have something like a JSON or XML format. And essentially in our case today, we're gonna to be making a script that deals with the UI and allows us to store information from it and then get debug information back. So essentially you could send this script off to a user. If they're having an issue, then you could say, please send me this debug file that's appeared in your documents. And then you can see, okay, this is the information and this is what I can learn from it. So we can just change things to whatever we want here. And once we hit updates, it's going to then update immediately in our debug file. So whether or not you're reading information from After Effects, Premiere, or any other Adobe application, or need to figure out why your UI isn't working, this tutorial is gonna teach you how to make a custom debug file to store variables uh, and how far in the code you're getting. And this will allow you to remotely or without any diving in using like TeamViewer to help debug your scripts. Before we get started, I just want to remind you down below, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can download the code for this to mess around with it yourself and just get a feel for how it works. And down there as well, you can follow us on Instagram to get live updates on when videos come out. And be sure to join us over on the Discord where you can talk about scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, tutorial ideas, and submit things that you're working on. You can come on and ask questions or help answer people's questions. And of course, if you want to help support the channel in any way and get some cool perks at the same time, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or a VIP and get cool things like monthly or weekly uh, streams to get your questions answered, get code and videos ahead of time as well as a shout out, and be involved in weekly polls and get emojis and other cool stuff. So without further ado, let's begin. We're gonna first create this simple three edit text uh, script UI. And these are gonna be our three pieces of information that we're gonna be debugging or storing in our custom file. So to get started, we're gonna create a new JavaScript file. And the first thing we're gonna do is kind of define our debug file itself. So I'm just gonna call a variable called debug file and set this equal to a file. And you can basically put this wherever you want. Most cases, you might just want to throw it on the desktop or the documents. So let's put this in documents and we'll call this uh, tutorial debug. And what file extension we give it really depends on you. You can set a custom file extension or something that people will recognize. In our case, let's just say uh, TDF for tutorial debug file. Now that might mean nothing, but maybe it could be the letters of your product or something, and then it will match nicely with everything else. Next, since this is just referring to a location, we need to check if this exists. So I'll say if our debug file dot exists, we want to do something. And if it doesn't exist, we'll do something different. Because if it doesn't exist, we need to create it from scratch. And if it does exist, we need to read whatever the data inside of it is. When it comes to debug files, uh, typically your script that the users are using don't need to read it. But in this case, for visual purposes, we're going to load the information from it into these edit text boxes. So if our debug file exists, we're going to do something in a minute. Uh, if it doesn't exist, though, we need to create it. In order to create our debug file, we're going to open it up in order to write to it. So we're going to open it up with a W. And then we're going to say debug file dot write. And the information we're going to write to it is just three lines of information. So you can see previously we had line one stuff, line two stuff. So let's just write that. We're gonna write line one stuff, and then we're gonna separate it with a new line. And then we'll have line two stuff, separate it with a new line, and finally add line three stuff. Now the way you use uh, break lines may depend on your OS, but it's either gonna be a backslash R or backslash N on Windows and Mac. Also at the end of all this, outside of our if and else statements, I'm going to take my debug file and close it. Uh, this is just for efficiency because we're also gonna be opening it up if it exists and we're still gonna need to close it. So if our debug file actually exists, we're gonna grab our debug file and open it in order to read it instead of write. 
And then we need a variable to store all the information. So let's create a global debug string or something like that. And we're going to set our global debug string equal to our debug file dot read. And this will read all of the contents inside of our file um, and then store it in here. And then finally, we're going to close it after we've either written to it or read from it. And one more thing, if it didn't exist and we're writing this arbitrary information, we're going to want to set our global debug string to that as well, because we're going to be using this global debug string in order to uh, read and write again. So now if I go ahead and load up my documents and I go ahead and run the script, you can see it's going to create a tutorial debug.tdf file and my computer's not going to recognize it, but I can just open it up with say a text editor and you can see now we have our three lines of debug information. So if you had just a super simple script and you wanted to grab some of the UI data and see what the user was inputting and store that inside of your debug file, you could just then grab whatever your window is or your variables from it and then store it inside of your debug file and say, hey, please send me that uh, tutorial debug.tdf file. But we're going to go a step further and we're going to create a new UI, uh, which is going to be just the same as the one you saw. So we'll create a new window. It's going to be a palette type window. We're just going to call it debug test, undefined size, and we're just going to fill it with the uh, elements top to bottom. So I'll set the orientation of the window to be a column. And then we're going to need an edit text one. And we're going to add this to our window as an edit text box, undefined size, and we're going to grab our global debug string and split it by the new line. And then we're going to grab the first value of that, or zero for the first index. And then we're going to duplicate this, create edit text two. We're going to grab the first index and then, and for edit text three, we're going to grab the second index, which is the third element. So. Uh, this is basically going to take our global debug string, whether it already exists in this file or whether we just wrote it, it's going to then load those into these UI elements. So now let's create a button to update this and will allow us to resave the debug information based on whatever our inputs here are. So I'll say update button is equal to our window. We're going to add a button, undefined size, and we'll call it uh, update. And then let's go ahead and grab our window and center it and grab our window again and show it. And then lastly, we need to uh, basically have an update for that button. But first, let's just take a look at it. So right now it seems to be loading everything in the UI just fine. If I was to go into my file here and modify some things, go ahead and save it and then relaunch the extension you can see it's going to load those elements because our debug file exists, so it's going to read straight from it. But now what I want to do is set uh, these boxes to be the same size, and then as well, we need to give it the ability to update it. So if I go, went ahead and changed these back to line 1, line 2, and line 3, and hit update, then it would save it back into this file. So with that being said, let's grab our edit text one dot size and set it something to something kind of wide, like 220 by 20. And I'll go ahead and copy and paste this and update the variable names for our other edit text boxes. And then that should give us a nice desirable result where they have enough room to be seen, but aren't too long and should be able to hold everything. So now lastly, let's add an onclick function to our update button. So we'll say update button onclick. When we click on this button, we need to do some function here. All the code inside of here is going to execute whenever we click on update. Well, the first thing we need to do is uh, open up our file again, and we're going to be writing to it. We're going to overwrite everything with the information we have in here. If you wanted, you could maybe just add on top of it. But in our case, we just have these three elements we're going to totally overwrite. So we're going to open up our debug file uh, for writing purposes. And then of course, after all this, we're going to want to make sure we close it. So I'll do that first. And then what are, what are we going to write to it? We can actually define this in one line by saying debug file dot write. And what are we going to write? Well, we need to grab our edit text one dot text, whatever the text inside of this first box is, we need to grab that. 
and then we need to add again an end line so that it goes from here down to the next line. So in my case, that's going to be slash n. And then I can add my edit text to dot text, add another break line, and then finally add edit text three dot text. And I believe that should allow us to save it in there properly. Let's go ahead and run this. You can see, of course, nothing's updated, but we have our text here. Let's say line one, line two, and line three. I hit updates, nothing changes, but if I click on here, you can see it wants us to reload it with our new updated debug information from our UI. And like I said, this can be applied to your actual application itself. So if you have some kind of layer generation in After Effects or some kind of automation process, you can store all the sorts of information inside of this file, whether it's, hey, I've gotten to this line of code, or here's the variable name or array name of all of these elements to let you know for the computer specifically that the user is using uh, what, what's going on. So even if I close this and load it back up, it's going to continue to use those informations from inside of here. And I can go in and continue to update it as much as I want and get this information as debug information from my user without having to go into team viewer or invade any of their privacy. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button and down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. Down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub and get the code for this and test it out for yourself and expand it, implement it into your own scripts and much more. And down there as well, you can follow us on Instagram to be notified of when videos come out live. Don't forget, of course, to join the Discord server, get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and submit projects you're working on. Help people out with questions and ask your own questions as well. And lastly, if you want to support the channel and get cool perks at the same time, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or a VIP to get different perks as well as help support everything we make. And that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time.